So in the last video, we took a look at this new derivative rule, which was how do I do the derivative of an exponential function, like a number raised to power x, like a derivative of 2 to the x. Well, now here to end this section, we're going to take a look at one important question. What if I wanted to find something like the first derivative of 2 to a power of 2x? So like it's not just 2 to the x, but it's now like 2 to the stuff. Would there be any errors in either of the following solutions? I'm going to ask you here to go ahead and pause the video and try to think through each of these solutions and see if any of them might actually be, I don't know, in error in some way. Go ahead, pause the video. When you unpause, you'll see me talk through each of these solutions. Okay, well what you should have actually found is that there actually are no errors in either of these solutions. Let's take a look here at the first one. The first one here is making use of the chain rule. It says if I have to do the derivative of 2 to the stuff, my answer should be 2 to the stuff natural log 2. So that is, I'm just following my basic derivative rule that we have up here. But now I have to follow up with a chain rule portion by saying, look at the stuff in the power. It wasn't just an x, so I need its derivative. Of course, the derivative of this 2x is just this 2 that's right here. And now I can take these 2s and this 2 and kind of combine them, right? I'm going to have one extra 2 added onto the stack, so my exponent goes up by 1. So this solution number 1, perfectly valid. Now I could also go ahead and use some algebra maybe before I start. I could rewrite this 2 to the 2x as 2 to the 2 and then to the x, or 4 to the power of x. And then using the derivative rule that we have up above, Right? This guy here, I could say that if I had the derivative of 4 to the x, the answer should be 4 to the x natural log 4, which is exactly what I have. So if these are both correct solutions, then it should actually be possible to confirm that they are the exact same solution. And I'm actually going to go ahead and show that they actually are. Take a look here. Note that if I was working with this 2 to the 2x plus 1, times the natural log of 2. I again could rewrite this as 2 to the 2x, pull another 2 off on the side with the natural log of 2, kind of going back one step from this line. But now I can take this 2 right here and kind of bring it up as an exponent inside the natural log. And I can rewrite this um, other piece in the following way. I can write this again as 2 to the 2 to the x, and here, natural log 2 to the 2. So this is going to be 4 to the x times natural log of 4. So these things here are actually the same. Now, the reason that I show this typically at the end of this section is because oftentimes the approach that you take and a friend might take or that I would take or that a book solution would take to different questions are going to be different. And so you might end a question maybe saying having an answer that looks like this. And then you look in the, you know, the solutions or something and you see an answer that looks like this. And you might start to think, oh gosh, well I'm totally wrong. I did nothing correct here. I don't understand the topic whatsoever. But that's not necessarily true because depending on the way that I choose to approach the question can drastically impact the way that my derivative looks. And so oftentimes if you find that you have a different solution than me or a different solution than someone else that you're working with or than another source that, that you're comparing to, then it's probably going to be important to double check and see if your answers are actually the same. And you can do that in two ways. Maybe you can go ahead and actually confirm that they're the same by trying to turn one into the other like I did here. But you might also just take a look at the argument that's being displayed and see if the argument that you have or that the other source has are actually flawed in any way. And if they're not flawed, then it would probably seem like eh, both answers are probably going to be equal in some way. Of course, if you ever have a situation like this happening as you're working through worksheets, please by all means let me know because I know I have a lot of students every semester who say, you know, I tried the problem this way, it didn't look anything like your solution, did I do this right? And I have no problem. Talk to me about things like that. I'm more than happy to help um, and help to try to confirm um, or identify, confirm that you're taking the right approach or identify maybe where something went wrong.
So by all means, reach out to me um, with questions and concerns that you have, but be practicing because you want to try to hit these issues uh, that you might be having as quickly as you can so you can resolve them and feel really confident as we continue to move forward here in Chapter 3.